Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm here with uh, Jan Brathwaite, City Manager. Jan, I can't thank you enough for coming on such short notice. I, uh, one of my guests had an a emergency, a mm -hmm. hospital emergency. And it's good to have uh, good friends who <laughs> take you out of a jam. Yeah. You know, so I, I have to let you know I appreciate that. How's everything going? Everything's <laughs> going good. You had a good festival. I had a good August month, yes. A good freedom a whole, month. Whole, good a whole free, month. A whole freedom yes, month. Yes, yeah. Yes. A lot of activities within the city limits. So I think we're doing well and we'll have more coming. Yes. Well, first of all, in, in, it's good that you said city limits. Tell us the. Uh, the boundaries of the city? <laughs> well, the city of Rotown encompasses from the bottom of Jean Hill in the east to Slaney in the west. And then we go up through Lower Estate and just the tip of the environments of Humptum Scott mm -hmm. in that area. And we do take a little hike up um, Paul Watley Drive and Mans Road. Mm -hmm. So those within those confines, those are within the city limits. We take over parcel estate also. So parcel, uh, what has here? Yes, anything within the watershed surrounding Rotom, yes. Okay, so up to the roundabout, Bargas Bay? Yeah, and all of that is within the confines <coughs> of the city. And how, how far east, how far up we going? Up, as it, as it relates to east, we go as far as Jean Hill, the bottom of Jean Hill. The bottom of Jean Hill, yeah. okay. it's a mm -hmm. big city. Yes, <laughs> very big city. I had not realized the city. Yes. You know, you, you, know you, you think of the city as road, town, town road, proper. town, proper. Yeah. yeah. But um, <laughs> under this new remit, we have extended the limits of the city to involve actually three districts, District 4, District 5, and part of District 6. So, so th that's this something new? Under my remit, that's the instructions that I got as the city, limit, as, as the city manager. Okay. Yeah. So the city has been expanding? Yes. It, it was not always the case. It was not always that big. Oh, okay. That's interesting. It kind of went from roundabout to roundabout, but we've expanded it a little bit. Any particular reason given for that? I don't know that there's a major reason, but I can understand why. Because as you enter the city, both east and west, you know, once you get into the limits within the watershed that surrounds Road Town, that is what encompasses the watershed. So. I think that's probably one of the main reasons. Okay. So you was, you're saying you had a good um, a good month of August. Yes, a good emancipation month. A good emancipation yeah, month. What, what good. were some of the things that happened? Actually, we did a lot of things within the confines of the city. And one of the things I'd like to say right now is that I express sincere appreciation to the business community within the confines of the city. A lot of the business people, you know, stepped outside of the box this year and they did a lot of different things. We actually had, um, the, we, we rendered the market scene, as you know, once again, yes. mm -hmm. um, and that was awesome. It really came off really, really well. And we did it in conjunction with the August Festival Food Fair. Um, and on one of those days, we also had BVI Motorsports doing their car show within the confines of the city. And Umi came outside and they had their fashion show. And Patsy Lays at One Stop Mall, they came out and they had a hat mannequin fashion show. So slowly but surely, um, people are getting in, into the groove as to you know how to bring the city to life. And I really, really appreciate the businesses. I actually, I think yesterday, I actually had another business um, owner saying to me, look, I want to come outside and we want to do a Friday afternoon cafe on a sidewalk and, you know, that kind of thing. So we are, I mean, th th people are coming out, you know, people are saying, look, you know, we want to try something different. Um, we, we hardly ever say no. We just make sure that we confine what it is to within the, you know, the, the limits with, and not to impede, you know, foot traffic, etc. Because there's been a, uh, a lot of talk well, for years now about uh, businesses, you know, stores opening late, having little sidewalk cafes, having music. And we, we do have uh, a few businesses that open up Bambouche, uh, Le Grand Cafe, Cafe. Cafe mm -hmm. and, and others uh, having music and entertainment mm -hmm. on Waterfront Drive. Uh, so how, is that something that we are going to This is to something that we're going to pursue. I actually have... Um, volunteers actually sitting in at Crafts Alive 
on the weekend and actually doing you know musical rendition some solo some um, groups coming in there on their own just asking for permission to um, actually do something within the confines of Crafts Alive. So that's also helping those vendors, which we in turn hopefully will start opening a little later. Um, we also have um, supermarkets asking to do their tasting of new items that they're bringing out on, onto the market and if they could do the tastings in in places within the confines of the city. And one of the things um, that I try to, ex to express is that it doesn't have to be one particular location. Um, we have the bandstand, we have the recreation grounds, we have the festival grounds, we have Noel Lloyd Park, we have Sir Albert George's Park, we have Queen Elizabeth Park. And so what we're trying to do is see how we could mobilize the city mm -hmm. in, its, in its widest sense so that people you know, are out and doing activities. I wanted to come to a situation where on a Friday evening you got to make a conscious decision as to which area you're going to be in because the city will be so alive. You have a vibrant cultural that's city. That, yes, that's what I'm talking about. You know, get, making it happen in a city. We don't have to be outlandish, we, but we just need to make things happen. Things of a different nature. I, I thought, you know, of course, uh, Craft for Life uh, expanded under mm -hmm. your watch. Right. And it's, it's, I mean, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The colors, the little houses, you know, the, the our traditional houses. Uh, it looks really nice. I thought that we were going to have some sort of entertainment facility in the Craft of Life itself. I had heard um, talk about a little theater or open air space or something. Is the, the theater is in the plan mm -hmm. and the theater is for phase two because there's a second phase to it. There's also the pond that will come on, the fishing pond where you'll have the experience of catching your fish in the pond of fishermen teaching you how to fish. So that all is going to come in phase two. Uh, we actually finished phase one, and phase one looks good. We're quite contented, but we're not, we don't intend to stop there. We're trying to really create something that you know, becomes a family atmosphere at the Crafts Alive Village. So we'll be able to see a lot more of our local culture and our heritage within the confines of Crafts Alive. Now, Main Street still remains a challenge. Yes. Uh, you, uh, when, when the post office was there, you had uh, uh, regular traffic, mm -hmm. people coming and going. And uh, then we, 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 we moved the post office uh, at the edge of the city limits. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm just finding out right. now where the city boundary <laughs> right. are, right? So it's mm -hmm. still in the city. city right. Yeah, but it's a little out of the city, in, in out, on, on outer limits of the city. And so Main Street proper seems to be having challenges. I think uh, as a result of the post office moving, uh, well, uh, perhaps not just only as a result of the post office moving, but certainly the, uh, the, 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 the decrease in traffic, traffic. had an impact on the business uh, community, the business businesses and, on Main Street. And it's something that I'm paying a lot of attention to. Um, I actually have spoken to a number of business people in that area. Some businesses have closed. Um, and one of the things is that there are a number of proposals for that actual building. Yes, we do have a situation as it relates to mold within the building, but I know that we have had people who have given us proposals on things we can do, how to help us eliminate it or even cut it back. Um, so those are things that we're actually looking for. And hopefully in 2014, there'll be some activity happening in that area. Because as long as that area has foot traffic, then the businesses on that area become vibrant. But another concern that I have is that a lot of um, people who do business on Main Street are concerned that we you know cars are parked on Main Street basically all day. So that also prevents people who would probably want to run in, pick up something, and come back out giving them that opportunity. So that is also something that we have to look at. You know, how we're going to make sure that the traffic continues to move on Main Street so people can get in and out of those businesses on Main Street to assist them with what it is they're trying to do. So it is, it's not a back burner item. It's upfront on the agenda as to how we're going to create a little bit more vibrancy on Main Street, because I think it's, it is very crucial. During the, um, the original staging of the market scene, we had closed off the road for a couple of hours, and we really got that lash from that particular you know, public saying, you know, we really would like to see that road open. You know, we need that, that traffic to continue to happen. So um, 
that is something that is important for us as we look at the market scene. The market scene affects it in a different way than Christmas on Main Street, based on the fact that Christmas on Main Street has activity on the street, so people are actually going to come up and down the street. But when we do the market scene, because it's stuck down at Sir Albert George's Plaza, that poses another little challenge. So those are some of the things that we have to look at as we look at housing the market scene, which is a market scene that we will try to house at least four times a year. Okay. So the, so the post office is not coming back? I don't know that it's not coming back. I know that um, plans are proposed for how to refit the building so that at least it's a building that people can work in. Because we did have the um, proposed museum that we did have in there, but we had to end up closing it because the, the mold was just a little bit too much. Okay. Now, there's been a couple of plans for the development of Main Street, mm -hmm. you know, with um, brick streets in cobblestone. Uh, cobblestone streets and uh fancy lighting you know and uh, 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 some kind of regulations so what kind of buildings can go there maintaining the quaintness yes. of main street and uh the people have looking, there has even been talk about uh making uh, the, the street a pedestrian uh area that uh I, I don't know how that will work when we take into account that we only have two streets. Right. You know, I mean, two, from main, two main, main streets. streets. Yes. And when one, when activity is on one, the other one, you know, is, uh, has some challenges. So, but those, but those are some ideas that have been uh, tossed around and so on. I think a couple, a couple of different ideas have been tossed around. But up to, and then this is a long, long time, maybe 20, 30 years, but we still can't seem to get anything going on Main Street. Actually, for my 2014 plans, um, Main Street is an area, like I say, it's on the front burner. And um, I don't think that anything will happen on Main Street until we come to the Main Street residents and the business community on Main Street. We have to ensure that whatever we do, we do in tandem with them and mm -hmm. that it's workable for all the parties involved. So it's forefront. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, it has to happen. Things need to happen on Main Street. The, the historical nature of Main Street is something that is crucial to our well-being and our moving forward from a heritage perspective. And I think that's one of the areas that we really, really want to highlight. Um, during the um, International Museum Day, we did create a tour. And out of that tour, I've been able to create four other tours out of that tour. So we have a a shopping tour that we can do on Main Street. There's a historical tour on Main Street. There's actually a pub tour where you can go and stop at the cafes and the pubs on Main Street and, and really get a, a feel of, you know, the cultural heritage of, of the country and, you know, who meets and meet and greet in these pubs. So, yes, we're coming, you know, slowly but surely with, with a lot of things. Um, a lot of things are happening behind the scenes. Um, as it relates to what happens within the city, because for me it's a balancing act. Because the city has a main street and it has a front street, and and there's there's a lot of activity that needs to happen. And as we look to bring in more, especially cruise ship visitors, we have to diversify how we handle what happens within the confines of the city. We can't let everything bottleneck in the lower part of the city. We need to expand to the upper part of the city. So those are things that we are taking into consideration. Okay. I'm here with uh, Jan Bradford, the city manager. The phone lines are open, the text line is open. Um, call us, send a text, so you ask a question, make a comment. We'll be happy to hear, to hear from you. Uh, yes, there's going to be a, a cruise ship pair expansion. There's going to be land side development, uh, additional tourists. And I don't know how many I don't know how many additional tourists we'll get because 2007 we had close to a million tourists I know. come to the territory for that I know. year 948,000 mm -hmm. uh, tourists to, to be exact came through that year and it, it was a vibrant year it Business, was. businesses did well the city was jumping and it didn't seem so bad no it wasn't. Because <laughs> that's, that's one of our concerns. Right. It, it, it wasn't so bad because one of the things is, though, that even though we have almost a million visitors in the Virgin Islands, you don't feel it like that. 
Um, as, the, as the development of the cruise pair happens though, there may be a little bit more impact. That's one of the reasons why it's so crucial for us to make sure that we diversify a little bit of what happens on the land side so that we could actually spread out these visitors a little bit more. And from the city perspective, I am, want them to enjoy as much of this city as is humanly possible. So yes, we have to plan how we're going to do that, how we're going to create entertainment spots in other places than the normal spots, and how we can get businesses to do what you know they've started to do, come outside, do some things that are a little different, you know, so that we could create you know a city that's very vibrant and that is something different from the rest of the region. Well, now you have. You, you have uh, increased uh, increased activity with the, with the with the coming of the the, the landside development and, and the pay expansion. Mm -hmm. Traffic has always been a challenge when cruise ships come into the territory, uh, particularly. Uh, and there were, there was talk with the development of a trolley system. Mm -hmm. I think that's gone out the window. Uh, how, any plans to, to mitigate actually, that challenge? Actually, um, yesterday I sat in a meeting and, you know, I had a couple of um, business people within the city limit talking about, you know, how they can see us um, ensuring that the traffic happens and drawing designs and so forth. So what I said to them is that, you know, proposals sound good. So let's get it on paper and let's actually see how it works. And then maybe what we could do is some simulation exercises to see what really works as it relates to the traffic flow. But traffic flow is going to be something that we have to address and in the not too distant future. We have to address this, the traffic within the confines of the city. And as you spoke about pedestrianizing Main Street, that's another situation that we really have to seriously look at because if we pedestrianize Main Street totally and not probably do it in segments, then yeah, we, we in really different, would, different times right, during the day. You know, yeah. We really mm -hmm. would have a problem, but all of that is you know, on the drawing board, it's a lot to look at within the confines of the city because right now a lot of attention is being paid to the lower part of the city and we still have the upper part of the city that still needs attention, especially when you look at, you know, what happens at the roundabout at Port Purcell and, you know, that whole situation coming down from um, um, Fort Hill and that kind of stuff. So I'm not just going to concentrate on the lower part of the city. I have to concentrate on the entire city so that, you know, it becomes a vibrant city for all whether you're on foot or whether you're in a vehicle. Well, parking is, 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 is another challenge in, in, in the city, along with the traffic. I have found that I'm able to park, for example, uh, up around the city area, uh, the taxi stand area, or even Bobby's area, Bolo's area, uh, it, you know, and walk to where I have to go, uh, whether it's uh, Scotia Bank, Banco Popular, the uh, admin mm -hmm. complex, in on Main Street, and I could I, and I enjoy w walking. So this is 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 good for me. Uh, do we need uh, a parking lot open uh, right there next to, uh, to 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 Village Key, mm -hmm. where you pay a dollar right. an hour? Mm -hmm. And I thought that's a brilliant idea because I, if I got to go to Scotia Bank, I could come and pack in that parking lot, pay a dollar, go in the bank, get what I got to get done, mm -hmm. go in the other areas, get what I got to get done, come out. If I spend two hours in the, in the area, I pay two dollars. And it's an idea that um, I know from the Ministry of Communication and works with the minister is something that he's, he's very concerned about, the whole issue of parking. But more importantly than the parking is the situation that, you know, I also am a member of a committee that deals with healthy places and spaces. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas that we are concentrating on right now is the city. So one of the things we, we want to encourage people to do is ensure that the city is pedestrian friendly. Mm -hmm. So we've actually done from this from Slaney all the way up to um, Patsy Lake's new building. Um,
and just actually looked at the sidewalks, looked at, you know, the, how people actually traverse. We actually walked it ourselves. We actually stood up and actually watched the pedestrian movement. So those are things that we are concentrating on. And yes, parking is a challenge. And as I became the city manager, it wasn't even a month I was sitting in a chair. I actually have three proposals on my desk mm -hmm. that are proposal for people with parking garages. Um, something that I think that the ministry is eventually going to consider, you know, making parking garages. Um, and I can actually say one of the areas that they're looking at right now is actually a, a parking lot right now, but extending it up three, two, up to six stories high so that we could park and walk within the confines of the city. So you have a, 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 build, a parking a garage as a building that you could go in right. and right. go up and go up and... Right. Oh. And but one of the things that one of the concerns that I have is that as we build a parking garage in the city, that it shouldn't look like a parking garage, not in well, the city. So it has design, to be aesthetically yeah. pleasing mm -hmm. in order to meet the needs. So one of one of the designs I have seen is one where the front of the building is commercial space and you drive inside the building and then go around. So the front is a small suite, so people who have businesses with three, four people could also rent the space, and that is your office space, and then the parking garage is a little bit further in the back. Well, and that's a good idea. Yeah, and, and it, aesthetically pleasing. Um, one of the things I saw in the design is not just trees, but allowing the vines to go up on the trees, on the building, you know, so mm -hmm. it, it really becomes a facade, and the, the sidewalk is big enough for that. If you had a small cafe on the bottom, people could step out onto the sidewalk and, you know, have their coffee and so forth. Yeah, Very sounds, interesting. Yeah, yes. that sounds, like, that sounds mm -hmm. like a good idea. Now you have, um, you mentioned, I think, uh, well, we have, the, we have the Noel Light Park, and, and we've just gotten a, a, a bathroom, thanks to the Lions Club mm -hmm. and others. Uh, and and we and we've seen the importance of having that park. Uh, we have coming on stream the Queen Elizabeth mm -hmm. Park. How how involved in, 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 is that going to be, and how how much of that park could be used to to facilitate the, that green space that we're talking about and, and provide uh, exercise activity for people to maintain uh, wellness. Don't answer that yet. We're going to take a break. <laughs> and when we come back, <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk about the green spaces and the infrastructural development for exercise because, you know, wellness yeah. and the national health insurance and yeah. health care and all that stuff, is, you know, is, is got to be taken into consideration. Keep it locked right here in the spotlight. Don't forget the phone lines are open, the text line is open, and to call and text us when we come back after these words from the sponsors. Spotlight is brought to you by Tortola Concrete Limited, Clarence Thomas Limited, and H. Laverty Stout Community College. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm having a good time here with uh, Jan Bradford, the city manager. We are talking about developments in the city, and if you've just joined us, you've missed a lot, but there's a lot more to come. And we'd like you to make your comments. we got about 50, 15 minutes more. We'd like you to share in the discussion, ask questions, make comments, call us on the phone line, send us a text. We'd be happy to hear from you. And we were talking about, left off talking about green spaces. Uh, Queen Elizabeth Park is a big park and had big plans for it. What's up with that? What's taking so long? Actually, I don't know if it's taking long. There has been a little bit of movement mm -hmm. as it relates to QE2. Um, three weeks ago, we actually had some equipment in there looking at it. That kind of thing. But QE2 is going to be one of the hot, healthy spaces in this, within the confines of the city. Um, they've done a lot to ensure that A, it's a green space. It, it got more green mm -hmm. um, than one of the spaces on a walking track and running the track in that area. Um, and as we do that, um, we're also looking at how we're going to extend the road and look at walking and biking lanes mm -hmm. within the confines of the city. 
um, we've taken into account that a number of bikers come, especially on the ships, and they want to ride around the town and around the, the island. So bike, bike lanes and walking trails are something that we are actually looking at, and those will extend outside the confines of the city. Um, where, where it is is possible. I know we we are actually a lot of them go west, so we're actually looking at you know what we can do to improve that situation going to the west. But green spaces within the confines of the city is top on my priority. I would like to see green spaces. I would like to see us come outside and do a lot more things, especially around lunchtime. Come outside, inhale some fresh air and what have you. But also as we come outside, I want us to be a little bit more conscious about our healthy environment and putting our stuff in receptacles. I I just, you know, I, I take a walk out onto Wickham Ski at least three times a week, and sometimes I'm appalled at the number of pieces of trash that could be placed in the bins that are provided for people. If we're going to look at a healthy location and a healthy place, then we need to put our garbage in the receptacles. There are receptacles there, please, I you know, I beg, because that yeah. helps our city. You know, I mean, when, when, when you don't do it, then we have to end up paying a whole slew of people to clean up this garbage, which is taxpayers' dollars that we could be using to do infrastructure projects. Well, I have a pet peeve about that. You know, I come from a city where there are four receptacles on every block. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have a street going this way and a street going and this way, way, and each corner on each corner receptacle. sidewalk has a receptacle. So when you cross the street, you got a receptacle, you cross, you got a receptacle, you cross, you got a receptacle, you cross, you got a receptacle. Mm -hmm. I got to walk with my juice cup in my hand for quite a few yards before I could find a receptacle. I don't like that. And, and I, I, I feel your, pe your pet peeve, but at the same time, I hear that you're looking for this receptacle to put your trash in. But everybody and his neighbor will put their gar bag of garbage in, which is also another problem. Within this confines of the city, we do have collection. Um, one of the things that we are trying to ensure is that the collections happen a little bit more often and not necessarily in a garbage truck, but we're looking to source some smaller trucks so that during the day we can pick up the trash. Uh, we have a lot of people, especially businesses, that just put their trash out on the side of the road, yes, because um, we're going to pick it up. But by the time sometimes the truck gets to pick it up, it's all strewn from a dog or a cat or what have or you. Or chicken. Or chicken, you know, what have you. And, <laughs> what you going to do with chicken know? in the city? Well, actually, you know, I have a, um, <laughs> an email on my desk right now, and I, I take it out every couple of days about the chickens and the fact that they're crowing. And, you know, as city manager, what are you going to do about it? I think, I think from a realistic perspective, we got to be, we got to, we got to ensue that. That's our culture. So, you know, if you, you come live, in, you got to live with the chickens. You got to live with the chickens. I mean, yeah. hello. But I, I have mean, the chickens in the park is also a problem because, you know, you, you have them on board and people like to take the pictures, but they're taking the pictures and they walk in the poop and that's a whole other story. So, yeah. you know, the balancing act, the yeah. balancing that, that's act. A, that's you know? a challenge because I, I know see the chickens, they like to take, it's, it's, a, it's a novelty. Yeah. And then the kids who have never seen chickens before, kids oh, they, that come on the crew, right. uh, come to, uh, uh, to on vacation with their, with their parents. parents who never seen a chicken before, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they chase them around yeah. and the baby chicks. And, so it's, I don't know, it's maybe it could be an attraction. I think, I, th I think that's one of the things. I know that the, the, my, my guys that actually clean the North <laughs> Park are like, you know, uh, Mrs. Edwards, maybe we should cage them and feed them and, you know, get a business to pay a dollar to look at them and what have you and what have you. So there are not ideas, a bad, not a bad there idea. are ideas that are coming out of it. Um, as, as we look to to it, because it becomes even though it's 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 a nice sight, it becomes a little health hazard too. Because you have poop and people walking and poop, and then you know it smells for times and what have you. But it's something that we have to look we have to look at as to how we're going to manage the balance between the people and the chickens. Because sometimes they're a lot more than others. You know, sometimes it's like one or two, and then another time it's like the whole a whole bunch of them. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Well, getting back to the park, you you. The, are there plans, uh, designs available for, for the, the Queen Elizabeth Park? I know there, there, is, there, there are designs, yes, that mm -hmm. you can have like copies of. Um, and the, the, it, the poster board is up right now as to okay. what it, it should look like. Um, and and, and it's in, it, 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 it involves um, 
a walking a, a walking path around the park. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what, there's a there's also a water feature. Um, you know, a lot of family oriented any things. Entertain, any entertainment center. And there's a there's an amphitheater in there also. If you get an opportunity to, you should just go and just look at this the, the site. It's it's gonna be really nice when it's finished. It's gonna okay. be nice. Now, um, bike bike lanes and walking and sidewalks. Well, we have some sidewalks. Uh, uh, already, uh, from I know from what uh, uh, from McNamara. All right. from, uh, uh, in past you, you, yeah, yeah, just by low, just below Fort Bird. Just below Fort mm -hmm. right? All the way up to the to wrong the boat. All the way up to the wrong the boat approach puzzle. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So you gotta go to and, sidewalk. And beyond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and beyond. Go, yeah. But yeah. Bagus up to Kuma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and around yeah, yeah Bagus. By, by Bolos. I think by it's Bolos, just yeah. before we get to Bolos, yeah. So you got sidewalks. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and at least on on, One side on, on waterfront drive, mm -hmm. which is good. Uh, you're gonna have bike lanes uh, as well. Uh, uh, that that is that is, that is the intent. Um, we, how have we have space. That's a, that's the problem. So mm -hmm. actually, we are actually talking with town and country planning as to how we can incorporate the bike lane, the sidewalk and walking, you know, so that we, we don't have too much conflict. We may not be able to do it everywhere, but I know when you look past um, f um, Prospect Reef, there's talk about doing it going west that way, for sure, you know. Okay, because, you know, we, we, we need to have uh, infrastructure for exercise. Yes, we do. Because, uh, you know, the statistics are 47% of chronic right. diseases, we uh, we get into we get in national health insurance, so we need to yeah. promote wellness. So we don't need a doctor as much. So we don't have the escalated yeah. health costs. So everything have to be working together in harmony, holistically, to so that we could, you know, mm -hmm. maintain. And I'm I'm probably the the, the most fitting example right now because I've been walking a lot. I think it's showing. But that's <laughs> but that's 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 good. We got a, we got a car. Thank you for calling. Spotlight right ahead, please. Hello. Yes. I need to ask a question. Go right ahead. Well, yeah, um, cars are up on its side of the Say that again. You have what? Well, yeah, um, cars on its side of the road. They pick up the cars. Oh, good. They are handicapped, I say, right? A handicapped car is a park, you can walk in the street to have an excuse to. I could, uh, you got, you got, you got the, uh, the question. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, we got. Listen for the answer. Okay. Yes, we understand. We understand. We understand the question. We gonna get a response. Huh? We understand the question. We are going to get a response. Okay, my brother. Let um, I, let let Jeff. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's let um. We we we've heard the question. Let the um. Let let the city manager respond. So hang up and listen. Okay. Uh, All right. Cool. Well, um, in in response to his question, um, and and that's not something that I have noticed a lot. That a lot of people park on the sidewalks. Um, I actually noticed today that the. Royal Virgin Islands Police Force has come out
and a little bit more numbers and are actually addressing that particular situation because it becomes a problem. Yes, we have a, a, park, a challenge with parking, but the sidewalk would not be the place to park. And as he said that, people in wheelchairs, that's one of the other things that we have to um, be mindful of when it comes to the sidewalks. We have a lot of differently able challenged people within the confines of the city and they need to get around. So one of the things that we uh, have on the drawing board is an actual plan of how somebody who's differently able can move through the city with ease. So it's it's a matter of fixing the sidewalks to make sure the ramps are at the right angles because we do have some ramps that are off and what have you so that people who are differently able can have access to the facilities within the confines of the city. So that's something that is actually on the drawing board at this time so that we can look at which, you know, which wheelchair accesses we need to fix and make sure that, you know, they're in ample so that if the person is wheeling themselves, they don't have a challenge getting up on the ramp and getting off of the ramp. Mm -hmm. So yes, we are looking, there are a lot of things that we have to look at and it, it's going to take time. Um, I am quite pleased with the success that we've made. We've, we, we, our anniversary was the 21st of August since I've been sitting in this chair and I think we've done quite a bit. I'm pleased with myself. I know that we can do more and we will do more. But at the same time, you know, it's a balancing act because city management cannot work on its own. It works interlocking with every single entity within government. Okay. Uh, safety in the last in the few remaining minutes that we have, the, that, uh, the sidewalk issue leads right into that. Uh, law enforcement is one issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and safety, of course, uh, comes under law enforcement. We've had some challenges. We had... Uh, some some robberies. We are getting uh, the C CTV uh -huh. and so on. I mean, uh, what 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 what's happening with that? <clears throat> Actually, we um we have two. I think we have two proposals on the table right now as to the CCT. Uh, cameras and so forth and how we're going to install them. We actually did a, walk, a physical walkthrough um, of Crafts Alive Village, especially to see how those. Um, and we've actually took a walk through with the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force to actually see how the cameras, CCTV cameras, will work throughout the city of Rotom. So we have a proposal. We have proposals on the table. Um, actually, it's a situation as to the, we, you know when we will be able to get the finances to move them forward. The crafts of life situation is one that we want to move on very, very quickly. But for the, for the future of this, the Office of the City Management for Manager, one of the things that I envision um, uh, for the future is that the city becomes so sufficient that we have police for the city. The future that, you know, at the end of the day, that it's not just totally the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force's duty. ensure that the environs within the confines of the city are safe for the people that actually have to use the city. Well, we certainly hope so. We fall under the tyranny of the clock. And we, we felt... I, 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 I didn't have a clue, so I'm really, really <laughs> happy. I'm really, really happy. I, um, okay. I'm glad you called yeah, because, really you know... Happy. I was, I was saying to Natasha, you know, there's a lot to talk about. Today, I was saying to her, there's a lot to talk about, and we need to come up with a, a program as to how to talk about these things. But thanks to you, I got that call tonight, and I stepped to the challenge. Because people need to know. They need to understand. And I, I'd like to say before we close that, you know, if you have any concerns, comments, please feel free. We're, we're willing to listen. You, is there a place where you can be reached? I can be reached at 441-8800. 441-8800. That's that's cool. And don't forget, you you know, you have um, two outlets. You got JTV and you got, uh, you know, Spotlight and you have Umoja on ZBBI. Yes. So don't be a stranger. I won't. And thanks, <laughs> thanks for your help tonight. You're welcome. Cool. I want to thank uh, my other guests, uh, Nia Douglas and Katie Ann Johnson of the Interact Club of Road Town. Uh, so thank you for watching. Person that called, thank you for calling. Spotlight is rebroadcast at 2.30 on Sunday afternoons. You can also catch up with all the spotlights on jtvlive.net. Tune in next Tuesday right here on JTV. 
spotlight will be on the Cancer Society briefly, but the main event will be the discussion on national health insurance. This is a big topic uh, going for the last um, several weeks. National health insurance, the importance of us having national health insurance, so make sure that you're here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your words of encouragement. Your suggestions and criticisms, continue to email me at jtvspotlight at yahoo.com. I'm Ed Juenka, reminding you that when the spotlight is on, you see the facts. Peace. Spotlight is brought to you by the National Bank of the Virgin Islands, Clarence Thomas Limited, the BVI Tourist Board, and CCT Global Communications.